Hello, my name is Paul and welcome to another one of my Zapier training videos. In this video, I want to talk about custom values and how and when you might need to use them when building Zaps and automation. If you have any questions or comments, please leave me a comment below this video. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And if you do need help with Zapier, check out the link in the description below this video to learn more about my consulting services. So custom fields, what are they and when might you need to use them? Because there can be some confusion with custom when it comes to custom fields. So custom fields are typically used in the action steps of your automation to identify the lead or the object that you're trying to update. So the best way for me to explain that is for me to show you. So here's an automation that I've had, I have where when a new Calendly booking is created. So somebody books a time to chat with me through Calendly. A number of actions happen here. I'm going to skip these first few things. We don't need to worry about that. What I'm going to do here then is I'm going to, um, I'm updating a person here. So let's edit this step and we're going to go to the customize updated person. So what it's asking me in this app is which person in Pipedrive do you want to update? And if I click this drop down, it gives me a bunch of choices. When it loads them here, these are all the contacts in my system. There's actually, this isn't even everyone. This is just the start of the A list. Um, so I could pick one of these and I could say, yes, update this contact. But the thing is, is I don't want to update that one contact every time. When this runs, it's going to update a different contact every single time. So I actually can't choose any of these options. So what I do is you scroll to the bottom and we use a custom value. That's what I've done here. When you choose that, this second box appears and it says, what is the ID of the person that you want to update? And so that's what we're putting in here. It's, it's the unique identifier of the contact that we're trying to update. By putting in this unique identifier, it means that the person we're updating is different every single time. Because like I said, if I just pick one of these names, it's updating that one person, John Smith, every single time, which I don't want to do. It's up, we will need to update a different person every time. And so typically when you use custom values, you need to provide an ID or some kind of unique identifier to tell Pipedrive what object in the automation to update. So in this case, I can pull here, these are all of my previous steps in the automation. Uh, and this is where I can pull data from. So I could, if I go to step six, step six was to find a person. And the person we found has this ID here, 1370. So that's the ID that I've put in here. So let's let's talk through it a little bit. The, uh, the invitee schedules a call. Pipedrive then finds a person based on their email address. It goes into the system and finds them. And then in this step where it updates them, we're telling Pipedrive, the person you need to update is the person we found in the previous step, which has this ID here, 1370. And so that is a situation where you would need to use a custom field. Other situations would be maybe uh, updating a lead in the system or a booking. Any time where the object itself is changing every single time is often when you need to update or, or provide one of these IDs. So let me go to another example. Let's go to this one here. When a deal is one in my CRM, uh, Pipedrive will create it actually creates a task. Where's it doing that here? Step, this step here is creating a task in the system. What it then does is I want to create some subtasks on the task that I just created. So this is the task that was created. That's just a, a normal action that we can apply. And here's a subtask. Now, when I create a subtask, it asks me, what's the parent task? So a bit like my example before, if I click this drop down, or I actually didn't find any, but I could, I could show a list of tasks and it could say, you know, which task do you want to add this to? Well, in this case, again, it's going to be a different task every single time. So I use a custom value. And so here, this is the ID, the unique identifier for the task that I created in this previous step. So if I click here again, step five, there's the ID for the task that I created. So often custom values, you need to provide some kind of ID to make this work. Uh, so tasks or, or projects in Asana, leads in a CRM, um, these are all kind of situations where you might need to provide a custom value. So 
Please let me know if you have any questions about using custom values. I know it's a little bit of a funny idea for some people and wrapping your head around it can be a bit tricky. Once you've um, used a custom value once or twice in your zaps and you kind of understand it a little bit, it does get a lot easier to understand. So hopefully this video has helped you to get around that a little bit more. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.